I want to talk to you a little bit about buy-in, about getting commitment, and I want to tell you a bit of a personal story. I'm on my way right now from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, making a little trek out there. I'm actually going out for, for a photo shoot. Uh, recently, I've made a commitment to actually really start promoting my brand, um, get myself mainstream, uh, get myself out there into the world more so than ever. And this was a, a decision I was a little bit nervous about um, because putting yourself into the world as a pickup artist is something that it's hard to look back from. And I, I made this step when I started putting myself on YouTube, but mainstream is a whole other area. And this is reminiscent for me of another journey I once made to Hollywood, which was when I was in college, one credit away from graduating, I actually dropped out of school and moved across the country to go join the RSD crew out at Project Hollywood. It's turned out to be one of the best decisions I've ever made and completely life-changing, but again, at the time, it was a risk. In order to take those risks, in order to make the big steps in life, one of the things you need is commitment and buy-in. You need to make a strong decision, you need to go with it. I think this is a metaphor for um, the way that people come into their journey with girls, the way that people come into any big thing they want to do in life. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit first about my journey with girls, my journey in life. So I always, always, always loved women. I think I, I remember my first crush was when I was like four years old. Uh, and I've, I'd always had like a girl that I was into. I was obsessed in, in class, even in kindergarten, even in elementary school with um, a particular girl or impressing her or, or you know, I, I always knew that was something I wanted. But because of embarrassments or because of not, because of having awkward kind of parents, because of not wanting to be made fun of or laughed at, I always kind of kept that on the deal. I never wanted to show I was into anybody. I never wanted to take a risk. And all through elementary school, middle school, and even high school, I never really had a girlfriend. When you step up, uh, and when you're successful stepping up, you'd like to think that that will let you relax, but deep down you know that what that's gonna mean is you're gonna have to step up again, probably even bigger, and that can be difficult to deal with. Okay, so getting buy-in and all that stuff is extremely difficult. It's one of those things you need to, you need to make, a, make a decision. Tyler has a metaphor, he talks about uh, foot on the gas and the brake at the same time. And I think that's how most people are in game most of the time. And I think honestly, even to this day, even 10 years deep into teaching the game, I guess 11 now, 14 years into learning the game, even now, I find myself still foot on the gas and foot on the brake at the same time. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that journey uh, throughout my experience in learning game. Eighth grade, we had a, a class that was like um, games of skill, like board games, which I absolutely, absolutely crushed. I mean, that's, that's what I've done for like my entire life, has been good at those. So I, I crushed everybody at them. Um, there was a, a girl in my class who uh, I had a, a crush on, and she actually, by like sheer dumb luck, one time actually beat me at a board game, which even increased my crush. Um, so I went out of my way, bought a book about the game, learned, like studied up, learned how to like crush her at it, just completely decimated her the next week. Um, like to the point where she almost in tears by how bad she lost. Uh, and then uh, for whatever reason she crushed on me, she had her friend call me up and ask me out on her behalf. Um, and I, again, this is a girl that I not only liked, but gone out of my way to make her like me, gone out of my way to flirt with her. But I was so scared of potentially like what would happen if I was a boyfriend. I was potentially so scared of being found out to not know what, what I was doing. So scared of the next step and what I would have to live, live up to that uh, I actually um, uh, hesitated and eventually even said no to going out with her when she asked me out, even though I'd made all the effort. And then fast forward to maybe the, um, the culminating experience of my, of my uh, young life in terms of uh, not taking follow through and not pursuing girls. Uh, in ninth grade, I transferred to a new school it was a private school, I'd been in public school up until then. And uh, for the first time in my life, I was what I thought of as cool, right? It was a school where being smart was actually valued. It was a school where soccer was the major sport and I was a very, very good soccer player. So I was the only freshman on the varsity team that year. Um, so I thought I was hot shit. Got into class uh, and about the second or third day of class, we're in the back of history class, me and this girl flirting, giggling, having just great rapport. And uh, it was so obvious to everybody. We had to like, had, like, we were disturbing the class. It was so obvious that we liked each other. So a couple of like the quote unquote cool kids came up to me after class and were like, when are you gonna ask her out? And I, I was scared though, because I'd never had a girlfriend. I didn't want to, her to say no, number one. But number two, maybe even worse, I didn't want her to say yes. And then everyone to find out I didn't know what I was doing. I was a bad boyfriend, I didn't know what was going on. I wanted to stay cool. I didn't want to risk what I thought I had. And so I played it off, I said, nah, she's not really my type. Then I had the biggest crush I've ever had in my entire life on this girl for two straight years, um, to the point where if you'd said like, hottest model in the world or this girl, I would have said that girl. Uh, and then after two years of being great friends, having amazing chemistry the whole time, she eventually moved away. And uh, at her going away party, I asked if there was a time when she ever would have said yes to me if I'd asked her out, because I just had to know. 
Um, and she literally got a tear in her eye, got angry at me and left the room. And um, even having been friends for like good friends for two years, she was so pissed at me. She has not spoken to me since. Like she, she was not even like friended me on Facebook since. That's how pissed off she was about the whole thing. Needless to say, that was a really painful experience for me to know that the thing that I, I had had in my head as a thing I wanted for two straight years was sitting there waiting for me to just take it and I hadn't done it. And finally, I had so much pain that I made the commitment to myself that number one, I was gonna get good with girls. Number two, if I ever regretted something in my life, I'd regret something that I had done rather than something that I had not. And this was the first step in my pickup journey. I was still clueless, I still had no idea how to get girls, but this was the first step. This was the moment when everything else was decided. Because from there, I was willing to put in the effort, I was willing to make the commitment. I'm a smart enough guy. At that moment, I was gonna figure it out. Here I am on the border between Nevada and California, again on a big journey that happens to end me up in Los Angeles. Uh, and I want to talk about sort of the second stage in my journey of buy-in with getting good with girls. The first stage, of course, was I wasn't even sure I wanted to succeed. I didn't even try. I went out of my way almost through fear of success as much as fear of failure and didn't take any action. Then I had that painful experience in high school and decided to start taking action. My dad has this distinction he's always given me, which is, do you, would you like something or do you want something? And to him, I would like it to happen means it'd be nice if it happened, but I'm not willing to take action. I'm not willing to suffer. I'm not willing to do work for it, but it'd be nice if it happened. Do you want it to happen means you've made a decision, it's gonna happen, and you will fucking die to make it happen. Okay, so that's liking versus wanting. And so that's where I was now with respect to pick up with girls. I would have liked to have had a girlfriend. I would have liked to succeed, but I didn't want to succeed. I also didn't know which end was up. I had a lot of things to learn. But the things I would try would be things like um, I would send um, <clears throat> like flowers to a girl anonymously or I'd like ask a girl out to a dance, not even in person. I'd give her a card asking her out to a dance, like stuff like that, where basically if I was to take a rejection, it wouldn't be in person. It wouldn't be like full risky and there, there'd be no like immediate social blowback. All right. So I was I was trying. I was giving myself a chance to succeed, but I wasn't really. I was still gas and brakes, no real commitment. And it wasn't until um, I went to college and I started doing approaches with girls. So I realized I had to do approaches. But even then, there was no real commitment. There was no real follow through. It was this idea of like, go in, get a quick phone number, get out, treat the phone number as a victory, be happy, follow up, get her on the date, and then not even try on the date. I remember one particular date. This one really stood out for me. Um, actually, I'll, I'll give you two that really stood out. First one was I went on a date with this girl. I didn't think it had gone that well. Um, and I got her back to her doorstep. And I, I, I was just talking, I made a gesture sort of like this one with my hand out. And she thought I was suggesting a, a handshake. And she's like, don't you think a handshake's a little too formal as a way to end our date? Meaning kiss me, you idiot. Um, I was like, yeah, you're right. And I gave her like this like light platonic hug and went on my way, right? Just absolutely pathetic. And I knew, in my heart of hearts, I knew as I was walking away that I was a fucking pussy. But that's what I did. The second one, and this one really hurt, this is a girl I went out on like four dates with. I thought she was super cute, uh, really liked her. We had great chemistry, um, but I never made a move and I knew it. I knew I needed to kiss her. I knew she was begging for it. Like it was just like in my face. Um, and after four dates, she finally like got fed up and lost patience with me. Um, and one of the things I was really proud of in, in college, we had a really good soccer team and I was, I was on it. It was a source of pride for me. Um, and there was this other kid um, who had been at the tryouts for soccer and who had missed the team. We all kind of, he was kind of like dopey, kind of dorky kid and we all kind of laughed at him. Um, and to really hammer home the lesson for me, of course, this girl that I've been several dates with that I really liked, that I just hadn't kissed, I uh, happened to you know, be hanging out with some friends later uh, a few months down the road. And of course, she's dating the dorky, dopey guy that I think I'm miles and miles better than and just fucking just such a fucking slap in the face, right? But I needed those painful experiences. I needed that to get leverage on myself. I needed that to make me step up. And I finally did get the gumption to finally kiss a girl. And ironically, I, I had waited so long and was so good at the other things that the first girl I kissed was actually the first girl I had sex with too. Um, and even there, I almost didn't kiss her. I, it was the end of our date. Um, she was getting in her car, leaving, and I just, it hurt so bad. It hurt so bad. I, I physically knocked on the window, made her get out of the car, made her stand up. I said, there's something I have to tell you. And then I kissed her. Um, and it was awkward as fuck, but I finally fucking did it, right? So I got that leverage on myself. I decided. 
I bought into myself, I had enough pain, right? How do people operate? People basically operate based on seeking pleasure or avoiding pain. Right, that's it. Almost everything you're going to break down that you do in life, seeking pleasure or avoiding pain. Right? And so, if you want to motivate yourself, here's a tip. Control what you associate with pleasure and what you associate with pain. If you associate the right things with pleasure and the right things with pain, you will do well at motivating yourself and you will do well in life. Um, one other interesting thing to note in terms of the pleasure and pain, um, they've done studies and they've mathematically measured it. I could break it down how they've done it, but it doesn't really matter. The point is that the motivation to avoid pain is about two and a half times stronger than the motivation to seek pleasure. Right? So um, that's why a lot of times it takes that painful experience to get guys into the game. That's why it takes that strong push. Um, and in a sense, what you need to do is associate certain behaviors with um, with pleasure, with good things, have good good visions with them, imagine where they're gonna get you, um, get sensually aroused by them even, um, and then the things that you need to stop doing, those bad habits that are, that are hampering your life or the things that are holding you back, the excuses you're giving yourself, you need to find them so disgusting and find so much pain in them that you absolutely will never consider them again.